years ago, the mighty kingdom of Lordaeron fell. It was then occupied by the Scourge, then the Forsaken, but now with Battle for Azeroth, everything changed. The Forsaken military was shattered, the city blighted, and the Alliance started closing in from all sides the Plaguelands, Gilneas, and Stromgod. With Sylvanas gone, what is going to be the future of the Kingdom of Lordaeron? Will it remain a ruin, or will it once again become the bulwark of the Alliance? I'd like to thank Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. They've sent it to me about six months ago, and it is amazing. You can put in 12 cards, you can put cash on the side, and it is just so much more practical than a regular wallet. There are over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. There is a lifetime warranty and a test drive for 45 days, meaning if you don't love it, you can send it back. If you go to ridge.com slash Doron, you can get 10% off as well as free worldwide shipping. Check out the link in the description below. Years ago, Lordaeron was the bastion of humanity, essentially the main kingdom, similar to what Stormwind is today. It was built after the Troll Wars 3000 years ago in the honor of General Lordaeron, who had sacrificed himself to save his people. Initially, it wasn't much, but thousands of years later, this small city-state would blossom into the Kingdom of Lordaeron, also known as the Lordaeron Empire. It was critical in the Orcish Wars and was essentially where the first alliance was founded, known as the Alliance of Lordaeron. Well, everything would go to hell and beyond as the Lich King was created and this human kingdom was the main and the critical target. Long story short, as I'm guessing all of you already know the lore behind it, Lordaeron was completely destroyed by the Scourge, most of the citizens were raised and then what was left would be divided into a million chunks, some taken by the Scourge, some by the Scarlet Crusade and the Alliance, while the majority of the territory was taken over by the Forsaken, with them most notably making the fallen capitals city their main base of operations. Since the Forsaken joined the Horde, the relations have been chaotic at best. The Alliance never really accepted that Sylvanas' undead took over the Bastion of Humanity and there has been a large movement since then to reconquer and to restore Lordaeron. Well, things weren't really so bad until the Banshee Queen made a pact with the Jailer and decided to just go completely crazy. Not only did she almost entirely get rid of any Alliance press in most despicable ways, but she also invaded the neighboring kingdom Gilneas, taking advantage of the Shattering. As her Shadowlands plan progressed, she burnt Teldrassil, which finally prompted Lance to immediately begin the gigantic campaign of the Battle for Lordaeron. Alliance came, they scorched half the land, conquered the capital, but then Sylvanas just pumped out Plague and made the entire zone radioactive and uninhabitable. This was the key turning point, as well as the fact that Sylvanas abandoned the Forsaken to join Solval. Battle for Azeroth ended, but here are the current results that we know of. Most of Forsaken presence was wiped out, although Horde still maintains a presence in Terrasfall. The undead identity was completely shattered, and this, in my opinion, is an even more critical point. It's not like the Forsaken just lost their ruler like they lost their government. Sylvanas created the Forsaken. She was the central figure of their society, like literally every undead dialogue mentions the Dark Lady. So, with the Dark Lady betraying and abandoning, them, quite a lot changes within their society and their will to remain, well, undead. Aside from the immediate consequences, things happened around them and have been happening for a long time, which all really end up in Alliance's favor when you consider everything. There was a massive battle in Stromgard, Stromgard won and is now rebuilding and will be a key staging ground right at the doorstep of Lordaeron. Gilneas was also all but shattered, but that happened nearly a decade ago and I'm guessing at this point the kingdom is going to finally be rebuilt, so this adds yet another entry point for the Alliance. Now, here is what really digs in the final nail in the Forsaken Coffin, the Plague Lands. As you might know, Scourge destroyed Lordaeron, and while the Forsaken took over a part of Lordaeron, a big chunk of the territory was still controlled by the Scourge. Well, first, Scourge was all but destroyed with the fall of the Lich King, and now with the Jailer's final offensive when he once again recruited the Scourge, it was almost entirely wiped out, and 
is barely even an entity at this point. Second, the Argent Crusade has been rebuilding and resuscitating these lands for a really long time at this point. Even in Cataclysm, we've seen a ton of progress, but I'm guessing now it is all but returned to life. Despite the organization being independent, it is still a majority led by human paladins, which I'm guessing aren't really going to defend forsaken interests. Now, I did mention a final nail, but here is the final, final nail for the forsaken. As Andin was kidnapped, the current leader of the alliance is Tyrellian, and do you know who Tyrellian is? High Exarch of the Army of the Light, one of the first five paladins of the Silver Hand, and most importantly, he was born in Lordran. In fact, he's one of the few surviving members of actual Lordran nobility. Seeing that he's also a bit fanatical and dedicated to the Light, I don't believe Tyrellian is as inclined to peace and harmony between factions as Anduin is, especially as this guy fought against the orcs in the initial invasion, so he's not really a huge fan of the whole. So let's sum it up real quick. The main base operations of the Forsaken were scorched and they were abandoned by their ruler. The Alliance is soon going to have a significant presence in the south with Stromgard, in the east with the Plaguelands, in the west with Gilneas, and the Alliance already invaded from the north in the past. So what this means is that the Alliance essentially surrounds the former lands of Ordon and the only viable threat is a contingent of the Horde that remains and quelled the last in the north, which in all reality is not that much. Now, Shadowlands will definitely determine what will happen, but I think a chance for Lordran finally being restored is highly likely. Yes, most of the population was wiped out, but some nobility still remains, and keep in mind there are still the refugees that live outside of Lordran, maybe a small percentage of the initial population, but still enough to make a difference and to return to their old home. Additionally, there was also this little conspiracy conspiracy going around with what remains of the Scarlet Crusade, now known as the Scarlet Brotherhood, that is dead set on reconquering Lordran. They are against Anduin and they see him as a friend of the undead, and they essentially want to use the alliance in order to reconquer their old home, and they also say that they have the true heir to Lordran and that they can restore the Manethil bloodline. Seeing as the Scarlet Crusaders are generally pretty nuts, this might not really mean all that much, and the alliance itself dismisses this as absurdities but it could be a key point in the future. They could either undermine the alliance or they could join them, giving them yet another entry point for the restoration of Lord. Ultimately though, with the way that things are set up right now, I do believe a restoration of Lordaeron is entirely possible, but it will highly depend on the outcome of the Shadowlands and what we will do there. Even though the capital city is entirely uninhabitable at this point, I don't think it is crazy to believe that the Alliance might have figured out the type of magic that can cleanse this plague and that can help the rebuilding of the fallen human kingdom. Thank you for watching. Check out all the Capitans around while we're in the Shadowlands by clicking on the screen and also check out Nano's Academy for videos on real world history and science. See you next time.